LLMs are great at general tasks. They can chat, summarize, write code, and solve broad problems. But the moment you step into enterprise workflows or niche domains, the limits show up fast. General purpose models don't always understand your terminology, your data, your rules, or the way your team communicates. And that's where fine tuning comes in. Fine tuning takes a pre trained model and teaches it on your data, your edge cases, and your domain knowledge. It keeps the model's broad knowledge but sharpens it so that it can perform with much higher accuracy in your niche domain. Hey there everyone, I am Anindam and in this video we are going to see what fine tuning is, how it improves model's accuracy and then we will walk through the full process of fine tuning an open source LLM and deploying it so we can use it just like any other API models. Sounds good? Before moving forward, don't forget to subscribe my channel and without delaying any further, let's get started. First, let's understand what fine tuning is. Fine tuning is a process of taking a pre-trained large language model and teaching it a new skill, domain or style based on your own data. So think of it like this. The large language model already understands the language, the reasoning, the structure. What it does not understand is your own domain specific patterns. So during fine tuning, you feed the model examples from your real world. It could be support chats, legal notes, medical summaries, financial queries, sales scripts, or even your own writing tone. As the model trains on this example, it starts picking up the nuances. How the answer should be shaped, what terminology to use, what to ignore or how to respond with higher accuracy for your task. The result is the version of the model that behaves more consistently in your workflow while still keeping the broad language knowledge of the original. This is why fine tuning is so powerful. Instead of building an LLM from scratch, you can adapt an existing one to perform like a domain expert. Before we jump into the hands-on step, let's talk a bit about Navius Token Factory. We will use it for both fine tuning and deploying our model. Navius Token Factory is an enterprise grade platform built specifically for working with state-of-the-art open source models. Not just inference, not just fine-tuning, but the entire workflow. Dataset handling, fine-tuning, checkpoints, deployment, and scalable API access. So here is what makes it so useful for our workflow. You can fine-tune the models directly on the platform using efficient methods like LoRa, so you don't need your own GPU. It supports a growing library of models from Meta, Nvidia, and others. So you can choose what fits your use case. They also provides a nice UI where you can upload your dataset, launch a fine-tuned job, and monitor training logs all in one place. After training, you can deploy your LoRa adapter as a production endpoint with just one click. Also, you get an OpenAI compatible APIs, which makes your work much easier to integrate your existing projects. It also includes the features that enterprises actually care about. For example, RVAC, SSO, audit logs, unified billing, and full compliance packs like SOC2 and HIPAA. And importantly, you can control data retention, including the option to set it as zero for higher privacy. So in this video, we will going to use Navius Token Factory for fine tuning the model, getting the checkpoint, and deploying the adapter, and finally running the inference on a live endpoint. Now let's see how to fine tune your model using Navius Token Factory. For that, I have already opened my Google Colab notebook here. So you can see that I have already mentioned all the instruction and step by step. So we will just go through this and see how this actually works. So first step is uh, we need to install uh, the required packages. So the first step is we need to install the required packages. So I will just run this. It will install all the required packages. While it is running, we need to have the NBS API keys, uh, which we'll use in the next step. So for Navius API keys, you can just go to Navius Token Factory and then go to Get API Key and then just add a name and click on Create and you will get the API key. So you can see I have already added my API keys here. You can see this is the Hugging Face token and this is the Navius API key. So now I'll close this. Okay, so we have installed the packages. Now we'll just run this. So this basically imports all the packages. 
and then just checks the uh, API key is there or not and then it just creates a client using the base URL and the API key so I'll just run it okay so it is done now the next step is we will prepare the data set as mentioned here fine tuning works really well with OpenAI style format with messages so so for this example I have just picked a sample data set so this is a sample data set that I have taken you can see it has only 1000 rows so it is fairly a small data set but it should work for this example but you can choose any other database based on your preferences also if you want to learn more about how you can create your data set namebs already had a dedicated section for that also if you want to know how you can create your own data set you can check this link here so here you can see that they have mentioned that you can use any of the three types one is a conversational one as you can see that we all know that role and content style format and another is the instruction based so you can see that only prompt is passing and you know the completion it's like a prediction thing and another format is the text data where you're just passing the raw text here so they already have added a bunch of examples for each of the types for this example as you can see we are using this data set so now let's get back to our collab notebook so here what i am doing is i'm just loading the data set uh, so I'm just using this method and passing the repo name and how you want to split. So I'm just splitting it uh, based on train and then I'm just formatting it in this format. And finally, I'm just saving it in training underscore data .jsnl file. So I will just run this. You can see that it is pulling it from hugging face. Okay, so it has already pulled them and it has saved thousand samples to training data .jsnl. You can also see it here. You can see that here is our training data.jsonl. Awesome. Now let's move forward to the step three. So the next step is pretty straightforward. We'll just upload the training data to our token factory. So let me just run this. So for that, we are using this client.files.create method. And we are then just also mentioning the purpose of it, which is fine tuned. Also here we are getting the training file ID make sure to keep it handy because we'll be needing that in the next steps to make things easier i have already logged it so this is our file id you can just copy it and it will be useful for the next steps now let's go to our fourth step so this is one of the most important step in our fine tuning tutorial so here we are creating the fine tuning job so you can see that we are using the client.finetuning.jobs.create method and here we are passing the model the suffix whatever suffix you want to add and the training file we already have the training file id stored so you can see that this is the training file id and then we are passing the hyper parameters so there are a lot of parameters so for this example i just kept them as default you can change this based on your preferences so we will be doing the lora fine tuning so i have made lora as true and then you can also change the number of epo to multiple as you want but for this example i just kept it as one Awesome. So I will just run this and here is the job created and you can see the status is running. So the fine tuning job has created. So now what we will do is we will just monitor what is the progress if it is completed or not. For that, we will just run this script. So this basically checks if the job status is active or not. So here after each 15 seconds, we are just pulling it to see what is the status. So you can see the current status is running and it will keep doing it like that apart from this you can also check it on navy's token factory so let's go there and now if you go to the fine tuning section so you can see that this is the fine tuning job that we are running and the status is running and you can see the parameters and data sets so if you prefer the ui method you can use this this is pretty straightforward you can see the job id when we have created the training data set you can also add validation data set for this example, I haven't added that and also the model type, which type of training we are doing and other hyperparameters. So you can see that what is the estimated cost as well, which is very less. Now I will close it and we'll go again to our notebook. So we can see here that it is still running. Now we need to wait until it finishes the job. Meanwhile, if you want to see the job events, you can also run this here. You can see all the list of events happening. So after that, we will check the job events here. So our fine tuning is completed and here we can see the job events. So first the job is submitted. Then you can see the data set training has processed successfully. And finally, the training is completed. 
So this gives you a best way to see if your fine tuning is successful or not. Next, we will just download the final checkpoint. After every epoch, Navier saves a checkpoint, a snapshot of the model at that moment. You will get all of them. For the final model, we will just need the final checkpoint. And here I am just downloading all the checkpoints. So let me run this. Okay, so you can see that this is the checkpoint ID. And you can see the file here. All the file getting downloaded, the adapter config.json. So if you have previously worked with load of fine tuning, you know these are the required file, the adapter config.json, the shape tensors, the tokenizer.json and config.json. So we have downloaded the checkpoint. Now I will just close it. The next step will be deploying our LoRa adapter to Navius Token Factory. So we have already done our fine tuning and we have got the LoRa adapter. So what we will do here is we will just deploy it on Navius Token Factory. So you can also do it from the UI as well. So all you need to do is just go here. You can see the status is completed. So here you can see the deploy and download checkpoints. And here you will get the LoRa adapter. So you can see all the files we have also seen in the Google Colab. And you can also copy the checkpoint ID here. And finally, you can just click here to deploy the model. So this will make the things much easier. But I will also show how you can do it in a code way. And let's go back to our Colab notebook. So this is a script you need to deploy your LoRa adapter on NoBS Token Factory. So first you can see that I'm just defining the API URL and the BIOS URL. One thing to point here is for the basic inferences, what you used to do is api.tokenfactory.navius.com slash v1 but for this example we don't need slash v1 so i'm only using till navius.com because if you see below we will be using the v0 slash models route so make sure you are not using the v1 endpoint because that could be a common pitfall next i'm just mentioning the base model here and then i'm just creating the loda model from the fine tuning job and here you can see the loda model from this job and the checkpoint so we have already stored the job ID and the checkpoint. So here we are just creating the metadata for it, the source, the base model, the name of the new model, the description. And then we are just making a request based on the JSON data here that we have created. Then the headers, which are the authorization header, we are just passing the NABS API key. And finally, we are just getting the response. You can see that for the better understanding, I've also created a logs here. Uh, so what response we are getting, we can check here. And finally, we are just returning the JSON file. And then we are waiting for the validation of the deployed model. So we will just checking if the LoRa model is deployed or not. Here we are getting the status of the deployed model. You can see that after five seconds, we are just getting the info of that. So all we are doing is making a request on API URL slash v0 slash models slash the name that we have passed along with the headers to see what is the status of it and here you can see you are getting the current status and we are just printing it so it makes it easier for us to see what is the status of it and then we are sending a test request to the fine-tuned model you can see i'm taking the model and setting it here and i'm just passing a very simple message which is hello so it should give me a response to hello and i'm just returning the response you can see this is classic open ai formatting and here I am basically creating the job. So you can see the LoRa name I will be getting from it. So this is the create LoRa from job function that we have created here previously. So now I'm just passing a demo arindam. Let me change it to YouTube arindam. And then we are passing the job ID. So you can see this is the job ID we have and the checkpoint ID, which is this. And the base model that we have defined, which is Metalama 3.1 8 billion instruct. And then we are just getting the name of it. So you can see I'm saving that in this variable. And finally, I'm just printing it. And after that, I'm just running the wait for validation function, which checks if the status is active or not for that model. And finally, if the model is active, so I'm using the get completion function and passing the model name. And as we have seen before, it is just making a test request with hello. And if there is an error, we are just logging it. So let me run the whole script. So I've started running. You can see the logs here. So creating LoRa model for fine tuning job this and checkpoint this. So the LoRa model creation request sent. You can see this is the response we got. This is the model, this is the source. 
and everything it has logged so again it is waiting for validation for this model you can see it has added my prefix here which is youtube addendum ersn and here we got that the status is active and now it is getting the sample completion and then we are requesting the sample completion from this model you can see this is the fine-tuned version you can see if you zoom it a bit you can see this is youtube addendum ersn awesome so we got the completion from this model here as well hello how are you doing today is there anything i can help with so our fine tuning process and the deployment of the model is done and within just few minutes we can see that how easy it is to fine tune your model and deploy it you can also chat it in the navius token factory playground so let me open navius token factory so here i will just go on the home screen and here you can see that we got two private endpoints so this is the one i just deployed right now so you can see that this is youtube arindam ersn and now you can chat with it in the playground just click on go to playground and you can add system prompts and add message also you can change the parameters tokens and you can test it out so let me just ask it to tell me a story so let me just pass it you can see that it has started generating and this is using the fine tune model that we have just deployed so awesome we got the response from our fine tune model and the whole process is much easier than you can thought and that brings us to the end of our fine tuning journey so small recap we started with the general purpose llm prepared our data set fine tuned it using lora and deployed it on navius token factory as a production ready model and the best part is we didn't need to manage gpus deal with infrastructure complexity or write custom serving code everything from fine tuning to deployment happen in one smooth pipeline i hope you found this video helpful if so do share it with your friends and let me know which topic you want me to cover next and for more videos like this don't forget to subscribe my channel and thanks a lot for watching the video till the end i will see you in the next video bye